system for being able to play this by triggering one event instead of having to trigger them individually. Because say you have a lot of events, say you have 10 different events that's going to happen in your level and you don't necessarily want to have 10 different buttons in your control panel in the director. So what we can do is just hook them all up to play in sequence and be triggered by the same event. So as long as we know that they're happening you know, at different times, we can reorganize them as we will. So to do this, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you a pretty simple way to set this up. And what we need is, first we need a new custom event. And let's call this px underscore next event. There we go. So this is going to be our master um, control, if you will, or trigger. Now, to keep things nice and tidy, because obviously if you had a lot of things coming out of this and you have a lot of different functions, you want to be able to quickly trace them back and have some um, idea of what goes where. And if we scroll out, this is kind of hard to see, you know, what, is, what does these do? What do these do? So there's an easy way to kind of organize things and you should be doing this, especially when working in a team, because it's always good for someone else if they pick up your blueprint to be able to see what you've been doing. So if you select all of these, and we hit the button C on our keyboard, it'll bring it all, it'll group it, bring it into a window that we can comment on. So we can call this the switch camera logic. This is basically the logic for how the camera changes. And we can change the color of it up here if we need to, uh, to add, you know, if you want to make it even more visible. Um, that's completely, you know, that's up to whatever project you're on, what kind of work you're doing. Um, it's more just, again, to organize this. If we had a lot of different of these, it would be nice to have some sort of distinction between them. And if we do the same here, we'll select these, hit C. We get our comment uh, section back up. So let's call this um, the virtual camera move. There we go. And we might as well after we've set up something here, we'll, we'll simply call that controls or master control setup. So when we have this, we could, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but we'll do it a fairly simple way. Um, we can pull out from this, pull a string out from this execution, and we're going to create a node that's called switch um, on int, which is switch on integral. So basically a number. So we'll switch on number. Here we go. Now, by default, this doesn't have any numbers in it, or it had, it just has a default execution. So if we run it now, we can still pull something around from here, but it'll just run one thing. It doesn't matter what number we uh, feed into our switch. But let's say we want to have these, let's say we first want to have a switch camera to the virtual camera, then we want the virtual move, and then we want to switch back to the track camera. Now we can do this, we, then we want three different things to happen in order. So we can add three pins, right? So zero, one, and two. It always starts with a zero, so just be aware of that. Um, so we could, of course, just pull our zero string and just pull that in here and do the same with one and just pull that over here. And then we'll, the third, third thing to happen, we can pull that in here. But as you can see, you know, there's already starting to be quite a lot of strings going around and this can get real messy real fast. So we're going to try to keep this as clean as possible. And this is a good workflow for you guys, I think, um, when working in a team. So let's go ahead and create logic that will execute these events but without having to bypass them. So now that we've created these two events, we can call on them within the same blueprint. So what we can do is we can pull out a string here and we can search for that particular custom event. Now, since we already uh, keep with our naming convention and call them px underscore, it's pretty easy to find them. We can just punch in px and then we'll see the name of our custom event. So first we want to do a switch camera. And then, so now if I play this event, 
it'll go straight forward and call this event, which again will call this event. So it's basically just sort of cleaning it up and making it more independent so we don't have, you know, quite as much mess. And then the next string we're going to pull out, we're going to do a virtual move. So let's write px again. We can have a virtual move. There we go. And since this is a flip-flop, every time it gets called, it'll flip between the two states. So we can um, go ahead and pull the third out and px and then uh, switch camera. There we go. So there's our three events being called. Now. If we were to play this now, it would play the first um, the first number in the sequence, which is zero. And as you can see here, the default value here is zero. Now we can set this specifically, but right now it's just going to be set to that specific number. So we need a logic to be able to change this number for every time we call this event. And what we need to do is basically add an integral that's going to increase for every time we call our event. So let's pull a string out from here and promote that to a variable. We could, and let's call this current event. Now, like we did last time, we could also hit the plus button here and add a variable, but this is just a faster way when you know what you need and it's obviously an integral that we're gonna need, we can pull that out. So it's just saving a bit of time. All right, so we have our current event here. Um, we, this doesn't need to be visible while we're in the editor uh, playing, so we don't need this to be visible. There's no, it doesn't help us much because we're going to put an automated, automated system for this to change. But as you can see, when we select this current event, or this integral, over on the right side here we have a couple of different settings, but we also have the default value. So this is, has a default value of zero. Um, and what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to add a incremental node in front of our switch. Now, there's a couple of ways we could do that. We could pull this out and say plus, and we say integral plus integral, and it'll add one for every step. But for this to work, we would also have to kind of feed this back into our current event and set our current event value. Otherwise, it's basically going to take this number, which is zero, and add one, and it doesn't necessarily know what to do. So we need to feed that back in, and then, um, and that will work fine. You know, we could hook this up there, and it would pass through here. It would set the new current event to be plus one of whatever it used to be. But there is also an easier way to do this, and this is just so you guys have kind of an overview of different nodes. I'm going to be using as many different nodes as I can when I'm working, so you guys can get some ideas of how to use these. What we can do instead is do an increment. So we can pull out a string and instead of writing plus, we hit the plus sign twice, right? And then we get an increment int. And what it does is it automatically adds one to whatever um, value or variable you're feeding into it. So when we do this, we're basically shortening down the amount of nodes. So instead of having first one plus and then feeding it back into the current event, what this node is, does is it basically just bypasses that and feeds it automatically into the current event. So it's just a different node that does the same thing and we're saving a bit of time while using it. And this, But this will only add one though. If we wanted to add more than one, so say we wanted it to jump over um, a number, we would have to have the plus node. All right, now the problem now is that whenever we call this, it adds one but our default value is set to zero. So it'll bypass zero and go straight to the number one. And an easy way to do to take care of this is basically setting the default value to minus one. So for the first time it gets called, it'll add it up to zero from minus one. Now, say we want to do this in consecutive order and we want to redo them. And this is particularly useful when we're doing um, studio testing because we don't necessarily want to stop and play the system to reset it all the time. And just sort of to make this more flexible, we can reset our current event. And I'll show you a different way to get the set current event. We can drag our value into our event graph and we will get the options to get the current event 
which will it's basically what we got over here so it's just receiving our current wealth so we can use that or we can set the new current event which is basically um, setting into whatever we want it to be so if we feed that into here first on our last switch uh, we we'll push this to minus one you know whenever we get to the number two it'll play this but it'll reset this current event to minus one so it's ready to start off with zero again whenever we start our current event from scratch so this way we can play this over and over again it'll, and it'll loop perfectly fine 